In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, found in the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love. Now, today I'm going to talk about mentorship this is pivotal for keeping new converts too many times people are saved then they're neglected and they fall away how we keep new converts is through this important word which is mentorship in proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 it says as iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another we need in our lives when we interact with christians and especially new converts to sharpen them hone them spiritually speaking to make them better let me ask you this question if you have children do you take them to little league sports do you take them to taekwondo do you go to different places like girl scout meetings or boy scout meetings if you run a company do, do you mentor people if you're a parent are you not mentoring in everything we do, there is some form of mentorship that we are either doing directly or indirectly. Now, if, if you go to a gym, a personal fitness trainer can, quote, mentor you. There are a lot of applications for this. But spiritually speaking, 2,000 years ago, Jesus used this word mentorship in a different context. I encourage you to go to BibleHub.com, BibleHub.com. And look up this word, Mathetius, Mathetius in Greek, BibleHub.com. Mathetius is M-A-T-H-E-T-E-S, M-A-T-H-E-T-E-S. And this word, Mathetius, means pupil and learner, which sounds like mentorship, does it not? When somebody's being mentored, they're either learning or they're, being, uh, they're serving a purpose as a pupil. Well, this word means discipleship. I'm not saying somebody should, when we, I use this word, I'm not referring for us to be making people into our image. Please understand that. I'm saying, let us make people into something else, into God's image. We're going to go further into this discipleship. Now, if it's used secularly, you can be, uh, go to a cooking class and be discipled in making food. You can go to a, a exercise guru and be discipled in weight loss and in workout routines and exercises. But this spiritual application is what Jesus is talking about in this process of discipleship. Now, it's important to understand that this is a biblical terminology. Mentorship or discipleship has its origins in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. But now, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. All of us are the work of your hands. Again, what does it sound like? When a father raises a child, he is what? Mentoring that child. And, and, and when God disciples us, he molds us like clay, and we become the work of his hands. So let's talk about mentorship slash discipleship in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. But how does God disciple and mentor people. What does the Bible say? It calls us Christians instruments of righteousness. And who is using us? If we, if we allow God to use us, we can be his instruments. Romans chapter 6, verse 13 and 18 calls us God's instruments of righteousness. And also we are called in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 through 7, his vessels of truth. We do this for the glory of God. We do this through what he has taught us to do in the Bible, which is to train people, to make disciples of people, and to follow Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Jesus gives us the Great Commission. Well, what does it say in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20? Jesus says, go and make disciples. Again, pupils, followers. 
And so when somebody is saved or made a disciple, but then they need to be what? A pupil and a follower after they come to Christ. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I command you. Again, discipleship. Once someone is saved, they need to be taught. New converts need to be grounded. Jesus says, and surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. So we're commanded to go, look for opportunities, make disciples, replicate. Teach them to obey everything Jesus says, I have commanded you. Now when it comes to discipleship, we need to understand new converts are babes. Now you don't have a babe brought into the world physically and then leave the babe crying in its blood to starve to death. You feed the baby. In the same likely ratio, spiritually speaking, you don't save a soul and let the baby die, starve to death. You ground the baby. You give the baby what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, the pure milk of the word. You, you got to ground them. You got to be there for them. You got to encourage them. You got to spiritually support them. You don't just ignore them. When somebody is saved and there's nobody saying amen when they're baptized, when somebody's saved and they're at church and they're sitting all by themselves, nobody's talking to them. When somebody is saved and nobody bothers to ground them, Christians are not following the biblical command, which is to save, to make disciples, and to teach them, as it says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. And this is something we absolutely must do. Obviously, those who are saved, as it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, are God's sons and daughters. But the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul use a certain terminology for new converts. In 3 John, or John calls new converts children, his children. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2, the Apostle Timothy, his child. When somebody is saved, we should have a very maternal look at them looking at them as a father should children, as parents should children, the newborn babies, and we should be protective of them, look out after them, care for them. That is what Christianity should be about. It should be about family. It should be about being there for one another. As Paul says, this is a powerful verse right here, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, the Apostle Paul says this, having such fond affection for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives, because you have become very dear to us. That is what Christianity should be about. The Apostle Paul says, I'm not only interested in sharing with you the gospel you have accepted, but I want to give you a part of my life. I want to invest a part of who I am into your life. As what we should do, we should include new converts who hear the gospel into our lives. We should invest in them. We should include them in church activities inside the building and spiritual activities outside of the building. We should love them. We should encourage them. We should show them hospitality and we should ground them. It should not be exclusion in the word in the matters of, of what we should do as Christians, but inclusion, what God has taught us to do.